This is the last week in Immerse, and I wanted us to be able to talk about, specifically, we're going to get to Deuteronomy 30 today, where he says, now choose life. And we'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, before we begin that, hopefully. So this is, this is a pile of stones, uh, my, and, and specifically some shells. Uh, when, this is a few years ago. My kids, we were, went to the beach. Uh, it was kind of our last hurrah. We were in Spain right before we returned back from France to the U.S. And uh, I'll tell you, the only times I really felt homesick for California was when I would go to Spain. And uh, all the trees matched what I back and, and uh, to be at the beach was really great. Uh, we had gone to this beach and it was early in the season. It was kind of April, still a little cool. And I, I, we were among the first people to be there, I think. And there must have been a big storm. And there were miles of seashells on this beach that were there. And uh, my older son, Samuel, had gathered um, these little bits of rocks and shells and had kind of put them over there, carefully collected all the things that he wanted. And I have, I have two kids. I, at the time, my younger one was maybe three, almost four, something like that. And so the older one had picked all of his shells and put them there. And if you have younger siblings and, have, and know probably what happens after that, when you have carefully selected your bits of shells, right? So the three-year-old of the shells on the beach, the ones that he wanted, were those. He came directly for those piles, and that kind of sibling pandemonium ensued. Uh, this, you can see, look, um, you can't see it very well in the picture, but all along the left, all the way down, it's shells, all the way down. The, the thing is, here's what's amazing. When we, we're going to be talking about now choose life. And I think oftentimes we equate our choices as kind of equally weighted. Like, well, if I choose this way, uh, it weighs about the same as this way. And I want us to keep in mind this picture of the beach with all of its shells when God says, choose life. Because the choice of death is kind of to choose that small little pile out of all the things you can have. But God is, says, here, there's an enormous stretch of things for you to choose from where you can live in me, to be with me, and to be in the life that I want to give you. Just don't touch these, okay? Don't touch these. And somehow, we are still drawn to that. And that, that same kind of thing is in our hearts. It's similar to what happened in the garden, right? You can have all the trees, just not this one. And we go to that one, right? And that's what we go for. So the, our choices when we choose life is not equal. There's a wide choice of life. Let's pray as we begin in the Word. Lord, we ask you to teach our hearts today as we come to your Word and read a couple of passages. May it shape us as we think about living into your life, to live, to choose life today in 2021. May we be people who, who choose you because you're the source of life, we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, what I'm going to do today, I mostly just have a couple of passages to read and a couple of application points. Uh, so uh, Deuteronomy 30 says this, this command I am giving you today. Uh, so Moses is at the end of his life. This is kind of the last hurrah. Deuteronomy is a speech that he gave to re sum, over, sum up the law. And this in particular is kind of the last thing he wants to leave with them. This command I'm giving you today is not too difficult for you. And it is not beyond your reach. It is not kept in heaven so distant that you must ask, who will go up to heaven and bring it down so we can hear it and obey? It's not kept beyond the sea or in the depths of the sea so far away that you have to ask, who will cross the sea to bring it to us so we can hear it and obey? No, the message is very close at hand. It is on your lips and in your heart. That's a theme we're going to see in your lips and in your heart so that you can obey it. Now listen, today I'm giving you a choice between life and death between prosperity and disaster. For I command you this day to love the Lord your God and to keep his commands, decrees, and regulations by walking in his ways. If you do this, you will live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land you are about to enter and occupy. This is before they go into the promised land, right? But if your heart turns away and you refuse to listen, and if you are drawn away to serve and worship other gods, then I warn you now, you will certainly be destroyed. You will not live a long good life in the land you are crossing the Jordan to occupy. Today, I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings 
and curses. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God and obeying him and committing yourself firmly to him. This is the key to your life. And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So the first thing he says, this is the key within your grasp. I've, I've given it. It's there for you to grab onto. Let's, let's do it. Let's grab that thing. And it, he says, it's a choice between life and death. And it, so choose life. Choose God's way. You know, we've been going over this over five books. Here's the, here's the choice, and uh, we should choose life. And he says, it's a word that has come to us that's accessible, and it's understandable for us. So Keep it close at hand. Keep it in your mouth. Keep it on your heart. Uh, the Apostle Paul, of course, knows this passage, and he's going to help us. It, he's really going to do my sermon for me. He, uh, the Apostle Paul is going to take this passage, and he's going to riff on it. And this is in Romans 10. It says this, For Moses writes that the law's way of making a person right with God requires obedience to all of its commands. But faith's way of getting right with God says, don't say in your heart, who will go up to heaven? Do you remember? Did you hear that in the Deuteronomy passage? He says, that's to bring Christ down to earth. And don't say, who will go down to the place of the dead, which is kind of like the depths, to bring Christ back to life again. In fact, it says, the message is very close at hand. It's on your lips and in your heart. And that message is the very message of faith that we preach. Paul's saying, this is the message that I preach to you, the one that's close at hand. If you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God and it is by openly declaring your faith with your lips that you are saved. As the scriptures tell us, no one, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. So Paul's saying there's this, there is a word that came to us. And it is, there was the word of the law that came, and it was understandable, but he says, we believe that Jesus is the word of God made flesh. And this word came to us. It's accessible. It's, it's understandable. And in Christ, this, this word of God, the law has now come near in a way that the law never could have done. That, that it comes to God's people in a way that he spoke to them in a way he hadn't before. He says, Christ died and rose again. And so access to God is completely there. It's right there before us. So, you know, we need to not try to pretend like we need to go up to heaven. And the idea, I thought of that, it's kind of like trying to recruit the Messiah. That we're trying to say somehow, we don't need to hope that God's going to worry about us or think about us. We don't need to think, God, God, is there some great thing I need to do for you? We don't need to try to convince God to think about us. God proved that he does because of the incarnation, that Christ came to us. It shows we don't need to go up to heaven. The one from heaven came to us, and he was willing to be with us. So you don't need to search far and wide. Christ, the word of God, has come to us. And, you know, we also don't need to rescue the Messiah. We need to stop trying to rescue the Messiah. Uh, the, in the Deuteronomy passage just talks about crossing back across the river or across the water, which makes me think about going back to Egypt. Uh, Paul, he talks about not going down to the deeps, uh, to the depths. Uh, so I, I think we don't need to try to rescue the Messiah to say, uh, you need my help. Uh, you need me to protect you in some way. This is the Christ who was resurrected. He came back from the dead. He can bring us back from wherever we have gone. He can bring you back. There's enough power. So there's enough care on God's, can, on God's part. He says, I care enough about you. And the resurrection tells us God is powerful enough for it. We don't have to go up to get him. We don't have to go down to save him. So we don't need to do that. What we do need to do is we need to say the truest thing. And uh, Paul says, you, if you profess with your lips that Jesus is Lord. He says, That's, that, this is kind of the earliest Christian uh, uh, saying Jesus is Lord, and we get to say this true thing, to say this is powerful. It, this is the, the part that saves us. And he, he combines that with our heart as well, um, that we can savor this true thing. It's somehow the thing that we say with our lips, it goes into our heart. 
And there actually isn't, even though he says them in two different ways, he says uh, our justification, our salvation, he really, they're the same thing. That we're saying something and really believing it deep down. And I, I love the idea of saying, I'm going to savor that thing that God has done. This word that God gave, I want it on my lips and in my heart. That it's deep down in me. I, I believe in that thing. I think we can do a few things uh, to, as far as action steps, what we should do from this. Uh, the first thing is, I think we can keep reading the Old Testament and have our minds trained by grace. Uh, hopefully, I heard that several times. I did this slide before what you guys shared, right? Um, so, hey, keep reading the Old Testament. There's good stuff in there. Uh, some of us have kind of avoided some things in there, right? Uh, I think there's some good things, and we can have our minds trained by grace. That God says, Jesus is the word that comes to you, and we understand all of Scripture with the key of Jesus. This is the key that was brought to you, it says in Deuteronomy 30. And Jesus is the key to understand all of the Old Testament. Uh, and we can do, we can put our feet where our hearts need to be. If our hearts need to be trained by God, we can put our feet where our hearts need to be. We can, this is the way to savor it. Uh, so, gosh, there's things that we know to be true, but we don't really feel it yet sometimes. Uh, maybe you feel that way about your kids, right? I'm supposed to love my kids. I don't feel it right now, but I'm supposed to, yeah. Um, so I think we can put our feet where our heart needs to be. So I treat my spouse in love, maybe not necessarily because I feel it right now, but because I, my heart needs to be there. I will uh, act toward my neighbor in certain love because that's where I need to be. Maybe, maybe you need to put yourself in serving on the serve day um, and you can go to that place to, to love and serve someone. Maybe you even run the marathon. That was not in my notes. Oh, walked right into that one. Oh my gosh. Put my feet. Lord, save me. Oh. I, I think that we, uh, for our heart to be there, we can try to maintain rhythms that help our hearts uh, to be able to get through seasons of pressure. To say, God, I, I want my heart to know that you are Lord. I'm not feeling it right now. I feel like everything's out of joint. How can we have a heart that sticks with God even in difficult times? I think we have to train ourselves to keep these rhythms of, of being with Jesus. And I, I would love for us to even just Maybe this week to be able to purposely notice beauty and wonder around us. That can sometimes be, help us to, to be able to say, God, you're in charge. And I, if I notice beautiful things, sometimes I'm not looking at the terrible things as well. And, and last thing, I think we should speak the true thing. And I, I want to speak the true thing to my circumstances. Jesus, you're Lord in this circumstance right now. You are in charge. Uh, we can, I, I can say in all my situations, you are Lord. It says in, uh, in the book of Hebrews, which we're going to do later, it says, make every effort to enter God's rest. And the rest that is talked about there is, is about our hearts that rest in God completely. Uh, that we, we can say, I think even our lips help us to go there. I can say the thing that's true so that I, my heart can go there. I, I, there was a, a, a post that we put on social media this week that uh, will sum this up really well. He says, uh, Pete Scazzaro, who's a pastor in New York, said, we know that we are uh, relaxing in God or resting in God when we start to see things in our hearts, when we feel a lack of anxiety in our body. We're able to say, yes, I'm, I'm actually resting in God. Uh, when I am less and less triggered by things going wrong, it shows that I am, my heart is resting in God, that my, my heart is there with him. Uh, that if we don't do for other people what they can do for themselves, shows that I'm resting in God. And we can maybe just embrace this season that God has put us in, uh, whether it's you're just living here and see me for a little while, or whether it's a season of, of life that you are being faced with. We can rest in God. So we can speak those true things and, and live our heart into that thing as well. I hope that, we, that you and I can do that. Uh, Moses says to us, now choose life. I hope that we will. Let's pray. Lord, may we be people who choose life, choose you. You are the source of life. You are the word that came near us. Holy Spirit, 
press those things into our hearts, we pray. So we'll be people who, who choose you, whatever the season is, whatever the thing that we're facing, that we will be able to speak the true thing, to say that you are Lord and be saved. We pray in your name. Amen.